Hello and welcome to the week 10 version of our Survivor Breakdown. Matt Brown, Stephen Andrus, of course you can find us over at the lines and if you're watching us here on the YouTube, go ahead, hit that subscribe button down below. Give us a thumbs up. Let us know in the comment section who you are playing this week. Everything we do absolutely free here. So we do appreciate the support. And if you are watching this one good on you for making it this long or two good on you for having the bankroll to get in one of these second chance or third chance or fourth chance or fifth chance survivor contests that we know are going on at the various places out there. I know DraftKings, I think was having their fifth chance uh, survivor that was going on with them so steven here we are um we have a few big favorites this week some teams that i do wonder if people even still have available the chiefs are nine and a half point favorites the giants are five and a half point favorites over the texans the raiders are six point favorites over the colts the 49ers are seven point favorites over the chargers and then the eagles our big 11 point favorite, 10 and a half, 11 point favorites over the Washington Commanders out there on Monday night. We kind of predicted that if you held on to the Eagles, you were going to have several opportunities to use them in the future. And here we are yet again with yet another opportunity for them to be used. Um, all right, Stephen. So let's uh, let's get into this and let's break down where we think the public and everyone is going to go here. So it appears if you look at the remaining entrants in the ESPN nationwide survivor contest, there are two top choices and then a big drop off to the rest in week 10. The first is the Kansas City Chiefs right now projected 44 percent ownership for the Chiefs as close to double digit favorites over the Jacksonville Jaguars. Yeah. And Matt, you and I are, are are not in agreement on the Jaguars power ranking. I still think they're a good team despite their record and 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 or at least a league average team despite their record. Uh, and they, I feel like they've had some bad luck. So we can discuss this game in a moment. But the other one was really surprising to me. The next most popular team right now going into week 10 in terms of the ESPN survivor entries is the Tampa Bay Buccaneers at 26 percent. And this is a four and five team playing a six and three team without home field advantage. And I wonder if some people are forgetting that this game is being played in Munich, Germany. But that's shocking to me that the Tampa Bay Buccaneers would be this popular of a pick and immediately is thrown out from my considerations this week. Yeah, I'm looking over at the guys at team rankings. They seem to think a little bit differently. They have okay. they actually don't have Tampa Bay even being 1% popular. Um wow. and so okay. they are they think the Giants are going to be the most popular play this week with Kansas City being the second most popular and then San Francisco coming in as third most popular. Um Look, it all makes sense to me. If I was still in, I would probably look to play the Giants this week. I would probably try and save, if, if, especially if I had like multiple entries or if this was kind of one of those second chance deals. Whereas where Kansas City's future value, especially in a second chance deal, holding onto them is going to be massively more and more to you than the Giants. And again, you're getting the Giants and it really doesn't matter what you think about this Giants team in my opinion here, Stephen, as a whole, and whether you think they've been lucky or whether you think it's sustainable for them to get these comeback victories, what we what we can't argue is Houston is either one of either the bottom team or the second worst team in your power ratings. It doesn't matter who you are. They are one of the two worst teams in all the NFL. So to get the Texans on the road as a dog to the giants coming out of a buy. I can understand why they would be popular. And again, for me, if I was in one of the second chance type pools, certainly would be my play for the week because holding on to the Eagles and the chiefs in a second chance pool is infinitely valuable, right? I mean, like that is just infinitely valuable to be holding on to two of the, you know, two of the three best teams in the NFL. So, um, kind of the way that I'm looking at this. And again, like I think you and I do at least both, both agree that we think Brian Dayball is sharp. And so this is going to be our first opportunity to see a Brian Dayball coach team out of a buy. 
And my guess is the Giants are going to look pretty good. And my guess is the Giants are going to have some new wrinkles in this offense. And, and I, uh, I also think it's a pretty good landing spot when you're playing the Texans at home coming out of a bye. So, um, you know, look, I understand the spread's only five, but I think that that is a, a really solid play this week. So I agree with everything you said in terms of the opponent and the coaching and um, and the spot here for the Giants. Mm. The, the one hesitation I have is that I just don't have them as high in my power rankings as some of the traditional non-sports betting power rankings that are out there that are basically just putting teams up at the top of their rankings based on record. I still think this is an average at best NFL team that's been pretty fortunate in terms of scheduling and getting some coin flips to go their way. So I, I don't think that this is an impossible task for Houston to upset them. So there are a couple of other teams I would pick over the Giants, but they certainly are at worst in the top three considerations for me this week when you consider that I am immediately throwing out the Chiefs just based on game theory and survivor contests and not wanting to pick one of the more popular teams this week, coupled with my respect for the Jacksonville Jaguars and their ceiling on any given week. So the Giants will be your fifth highest implied win percentage of the week. Um, If we look here, of course, Stephen, the biggest favorite is the Eagles. That said, for me, the future value on the Eagles is infinite, right? And again, if you're playing, if you're playing in a pool where there's only 10, 12 guys left, you have to consider all these big favorites. I get it. But if you're in one of these second chance pools that likely still has hundreds or maybe even thousands of people left, holding on to the Eagles allows you an opportunity next week. They play Indianapolis, who's terrible. In week 12, they play Green Bay, who might actually be terrible. I mean, like, seriously, we 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 don't really know, but I we kind of think that they might be terrible. If you were were to make it to week 17, they get the Saints. They're going to be big favorites over the Saints. A couple of games against the Giants. And they're like, you you are going to get a team that is favored in every single game moving forward if you hold on to the to the Eagles. And so for me, something I think you would definitely be looking to do. And then even with the Chiefs, right? I mean, I get it. Again, handful of people, Chiefs all day long. Bigger pool, second chance pool, things like that. You're getting games against the Denver, against Houston, against another game against Denver. You get the Raiders in week 18. Like there's a lot of opportunity to use the Chiefs as well moving forward, even though we're halfway through the season. The one team I want to touch on, Matt, here is that team that's kind of in the tier in terms of implied win probability, same as the Giants, and that is the Las Vegas Raiders, because I'm not sure you will ever get a better spot to take the Raiders and survive a rest of season than against the Indianapolis Colts, who continue to trot out Sam Ellinger, who now have hired a losing high school football coach and Jeff Saturday as their guy and have appointed a 30-year-old Gen Z to call plays who has never done it in the NFL because they are literally out of options. Like Frank Reich was their play caller. So uh, I don't know if the the Colts, you've talked about this last week and credit to you for bringing it up, but I don't think the Colts actually care about winning at this point. I think Jim Mercy is quietly trying to do everything he can to lose as many games as he can the rest of the way to get a quarterback. And the Las Vegas Raiders and Josh McDaniels do not instill confidence in closing out games and winning games with just saw them blow a 17 point lead for the third time last week but my god you can't get any closer to the bottom of the barrel i even think the colts are lower than the houston texans at this point with what they're trotting out there yeah i am looking at this and if again if we're playing in a if we're playing in a big pool i think you're picking between the giants and the raiders and i understand that the raiders have sucked too so far this year but i think those are the two teams that you're playing If you're in a medium-sized pool, I think the 49ers certainly become an option here because if you look at their future schedule, the only thing you're going to feel super comfortable playing them would be way out in week 16 against Washington. And so every one of these other games, sure, the 49ers are likely to be favored against Arizona, against New Orleans, probably even against Tampa, like all these, but it's going to be slight favorites. It's not going to be anything you're going to feel super confident in smashing the buttons. So like San Francisco to me this week against this banged up chargers team, a, a really, you know, a really good play again. And and you're probably just going to sit on them until week 16 if you don't play them this week. So if you think you're around in week 16, then by all means, hold on to them to play them against Washington. So, you know, I, again, like I said, 
massive pools. It's between Giants and Raiders. Medium-sized pools, I'm probably looking at the 49ers. And then, you know, super, super shallow pools. I think at this point, you can just kind of win and move on. If you want to play the Eagles, you want to play the Chiefs, I can't really hold that against you. But uh, any of those bigger pools, they just hold so much value moving forward. I think you're you're really going about it suboptimally if you play them this week. So that's kind of really the only options for me. Look, I know Dallas is, uh, you know, a decent favorite against Green Bay. And I understand that at this point, you are probably getting the absolute worst version of Green Bay that you're ever going to get. Certainly the worst version we've seen in a decade, but I'm not running to play Dallas on the road, even against this Packers squad, Steven. I mean, look, it's, it's still an offense that I think is questionable at best. Do I think the defense shows up? I do. And they likely win this game. I do think that as well, but I can't find myself really smashing the button for the Cowboys this week, especially considering they get Indy in week 13. They get Houston in week 14. Why would you risk it this week against Green Bay? Your head's exactly where mine is at in terms of future value here for the Cowboys and scheduling. And this is the season for the Green Bay Packers. You know, we can we can poo poo them all we want for the performance they had last week against Detroit and they did not score points, but they moved the ball. They outscored or they were better than Detroit in terms of yards per play. They just had the most miserable red zone execution that we may have seen from any team all season long. So uh, I understand why the Green Bay Packers are still at least dangerous to pull an upset here. If they don't win this, they're done and I don't expect Aaron Rodgers to just curl up in a ball and 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 go away for the rest of the season so and we know the Dallas Cowboys despite their high upside and their high talent are still an undisciplined team they take a lot of penalties that allows you to keep teams in games they run the ball a little bit more than we would like with a running back in Ezekiel Elliott that is not as efficient as their backup but they continue to pound him into the offensive line so uh, there there are plenty of paths where Green Bay can pull an upset in this game, despite how poorly they have looked in uh, in previous weeks here. Yeah, so that's kind of how I'm going about it this week, fellas. I mean, look, if you're if you are starting to look down, you know, towards the future, we do have Cleveland that you probably haven't used, and Cleveland plays Houston in Week 13. And what does that mean? Yes, that is Deshaun Watson will be back under center for for uh, Cleveland. So just something to, if you're wondering about, oh man, what if I play one of these teams? What am I going to do further down the line? You can start to kind of figure out some different spots that work pretty good for some of these other teams moving forward. If you think that Baltimore is only going to get stronger and you haven't used them so far, you get Carolina next week with Baltimore. They're on a bye this week. So you can kind of start mapping out and planning out different spots moving forward that, you know, if you do just want to take the, hey, I just want to move on. I'm playing Kansas City this week or I'm playing Philadelphia this week. I don't give a damn. I understand and I, and, and I can get with you on that. The only thing Kansas City and Philadelphia gives you is that you are you are you have two teams in your back pocket that are going to be favored every single week the rest of the season no matter what unless there's a giant injury at quarterback and so you at least will always have that in your back pocket right like you will always have a team that is going in as the favorite so long as they're you know whole so I mean again we can't predict injuries so we can't really go there so for me Stephen pretty simple like I said massive pool this week Giants or Raiders. I, I tend to go Giants. You tend to go Raiders. I think it's six and one, half dozen the other in both of those. Uh, bottom two teams in the NFL for me, uh, Texans and Colts right now. So those two teams in big pools, medium-sized pools, I think it's 49ers or should be in real consideration because, again, you're probably not going to feel super comfortable about playing them again until week 16 when they play Washington. So, you know, you can kind of go ahead and, and get them out of the way now. But a uh, really good spot against Washington week 16. And then, again, super shallow pools. If you have Kansas City, you have Philadelphia available. I can understand just wanting to move on in advance at this point. So I'm not going to poo-poo that idea. I'm not going to say that's a bad idea at all. So that's kind of how I'm approaching it this week, how I'm kind of looking at it. Really no interest in Dallas, Buffalo, Miami, any of that. Like None of those teams. Those would be the only teams in consideration. It really just depends on how many people are left for me. Yeah, we're pretty much aligned here, maybe different orders. So I agree with with still trying to save Philadelphia for a future week here. Although, I mean, next week is probably the spot and then you can't really use them again comfortably until 
you know, maybe week 15 against Chicago. They have Washington this week, then the Colts next week, two really good spots to use them. Then you have Green Bay, Tennessee, and the Giants three weeks in a row after that. So I'm assuming there's going to be other choices you're going to feel more comfortable with in those weeks. And then you have that Chicago game week 15. So I think this is the time to use the Eagles, if not this week, then next week. So yep. I want to put Eagles as my top choice this week. And then after that, I do think that this is, I mean, if you lose your survivor pool because you're, you, you, the other team has real life version of Ted Lasso and Jeff Saturday, the interim coach for the Indianapolis Colts, then so be it, right? You tip your cap. But I'm going to take the Raiders as my second choice this week. And then the third choice will be the New York Giants for me. Guys, good luck on your survivor picks here in week 10. And congrats for still being alive in all of those out there. Again, everything we do, absolutely free so please go ahead hit that subscribe button let us know in the comment section who you play in this week how many people are left in your pool and how does that just make you decide who you want to go with and all that have you started to eye some teams for next week as well like i mentioned be sure and and look baltimore has carolina next week certainly a really good spot for them so maybe you can kind of just plan okay i'll use baltimore next week if i haven't already used them so far this week so let us know in the comment section below and good luck on survivor here in week 10